This is Starb Storefront. When Moose wore custom, light-up shoes out one night, not only were people constantly asking him where he bought them, but everyone wanted to be his friend. The shoes are just a form of self-expression, and they had the power to instantly connect strangers. In this, Musk decided to launch his own shoe company, Reza, to build a community for people who like their own path. After multiple trips to Asia, years of development, and teetering on the verge of failure, he has created beautiful, exclusive shoes that light up to give everyone the magical feeling that he felt that night out. Today we chat with Mustafa Syed, the founder of Reza, about an upcoming collab with a huge car manufacturer, the insights he learned after locking in the designer of Crocs as his first investor, and how the brand exploded in popularity after Steve Aoki wore them one night while performing. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the founder of Reza. Must, thanks for coming on. People who don't know, what does your company do? Thank you for having me, Diego. Um, I'm the founder of Reza. Our mission is to inspire people to light their own path. We developed the world's most to advanced. light their own path. Light their own path, Via exactly. This, I like that, okay. Yeah, we're designed in Detroit, and it's all about bringing people together from around the world and doing something new in footwear, which is really exciting. What did you see in the sneaker world where you were like, all right, I'd like to have my own take, what's missing, or what did you want to do different as it related to, to the sort of the sneaker world? I thought sneaker world was was very boring. It was like the same drops growing up, and I feel like there was a lack of community. It was really just about who had the hottest shoe, but not really about you know what what does that mean to have the same product and to and to be in a in a niche community. Yeah. So for me, it was that, and it was also just lights. Lights are such an amazing way to bring people together. Yeah. And when I was in high school, I just took some Nike Air Forces. I just taped some LED lights around them. Were in my hometown in Michigan and. I had like 20 people want to be my friend that night, you know, stop me at a bar, stop me on the street. And I was like, wow, like lights really have possibility to bring people together. And yeah. what other way to do it than footwear? You saw something in the human. That's interesting. And then I love the community building part. I think fashion is that for, you know, when done well, I think fashion is all about community and creating sort of this cohesiveness. It's not like explicitly said, it's just something that sort of materializes. What's your background? Do you have a background in in shoes and fashion, well, how, you know, what was your first step in, in actually deciding to make a shoe? I love shoes, but I, I never had a background in in design. I studied business. I, I went to college for two years at Michigan State. I ended up going to China for about six weeks uh, when I was in college, and I wanted to create a crude sample of my shoe. So I went there, went to the factory, found a supplier who could put lights in shoes. I came back with. Was that hard to do? Did it take you a while to find that supplier? It did. Super yeah. hard. I, I didn't speak Chinese. I didn't know anyone in the country. Yeah, it's uh, tough. I, I somehow convinced my parents to, to send me over there. But when I came back, I had okay. a beautiful, you know. <laughs> like a mock-up or did you have like a prototype, like a real version? Barely a prototype. It, okay. was just a, it was just a really simple shoe with lights running around and I thought it looked cool. And then ultimately, I, I started showing the shoes to people. People loved it. And I was like, you know what? I, I, this brings me happiness. Like I see people loving the product. I see people wanting to connect. I feel like there's so little ways to connect, especially after COVID. People are really looking for an outlet. And yeah. if, if I was wearing these shoes and 100 people were stopping me on the street, just asking me questions and they ended up being my friends, I was like, why not do this? So I ended up dropping out of university after my sophomore year. So you, you believed in it that much, like you saw it that much that you're like, all right, I'm done with school. I'm going to go big into this sneaker company. I did. I was naive, wow. but I just jumped into it. I kind of love that. Yeah, yeah, you found your passion, I guess, to some extent. So you're seeing the signals in the market. People are sort of liking the shoe on a community level in your hometown. Do you then order a gazillion of them? Or is this like pre? Did you drop out with, with the order already made? Or were you like, I got to go start a brand. I got to get the website. And then I'll order the shoes later. Yeah, I didn't have any shoes. I didn't have any supply chain. Yeah. I just met one gentleman who is the former chief product officer at Crocs. Okay. He ended up becoming our first investor. So I basically dropped out having one small how did, how did you meet him? Just networking, telling people what you're working on, and you were introduced? Just through cold email. Yeah. Okay. I reached out to probably a couple hundred people over that time frame. Yeah. Ended up meeting an incredible designer, Andrew James, who's designed for Reebok, for New Balance. And he, he desi designed the croc? It's like his thing? Or he just worked for them? Our first investor, uh, he, he worked on, he was one of the designers of the Crocs. He was a chief product officer for a couple of years. Wow. And was an interim CEO. What did you learn from him? Just I'm just so curious because I think it's like the ugliest shoe ever, but it's uh, probably one of the most sold shoes of all time also. Yeah. What did you find interesting in just learning from, from him around the shoe, maybe the concept, why it works, why he thought it works, what he saw in the market? 
Yeah, I think Crocs is just, it's very simple. Like it's a really comfortable product yeah. and not everyone just cares about how things look. People care about how things feel yeah, yeah, and yeah. like what kind of like, like emotion it gives them. So I think like this exact from Crocs, he, he saw me with just 3D renderings of a light up shoe and he was like, you know, there might be something here. So he kind of took up faith and wow. w was our first check. And he had a, a plethora of factories in, in China and Taiwan and mm. he, he opened his doors to us. And then I spent about a year in, in, in Taiwan building the product with him, wow. getting a team. Uh, we got through, uh, we were accepted into Techstars Accelerator, which was our first venture. Which one? Venture dollars. Which one did you guys go to? Uh, Indianapolis. It's a Techstars Indianapolis. It's a, it's a sports accelerator. So we were one of the 10 companies who went through that. And it was a pretty awesome experience. What was one of your most memorable times there? Like, what's the best advice you got while going through the program? Uh, really just great mentorship. We were the earliest company. We didn't even have a shoe. And yeah. other companies in the program had millions of dollars in revenue. Yeah. But um, our managing director was uh, a really incredible gentleman, Jordan Flegel. He was the uh, founder of, of, of Draft.com and had had some really successful exits. And he just, you know, put a stamp on us. I, th I think people really love like when kids are doing things that speaks to their heart and just they just want to do. And we had a lot of support come our way. What do you think is the thing people when they meet you or see your product? What gets them? Is it like this like childhood? We used to rock these L.A. lights. Like what's the thing that you think really just captivates their attention and goes, you know, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and get involved in this company. I think it really, the lights are amazing and the story I think is really cool. And I, let's talk about the product as well and, and what we've done that's different. But sure, yeah. It's, it's clear really, you have a good team. And so, yeah, let's yeah. talk about the product and the evolution of, of what we're seeing right now. Yeah, the, the product itself is is something that we've poured a lot of our hearts into. It's a, it's the first shoe in the world to have a laser diode in the shoe. So the, the, the lights you see in the shoes is shooting through a glass tube. And that's what gives us really beautiful illuminated look inside of the shoe. And it just feels very different than a kid's LED shoe. Yeah. It feels really grown up and it's really sexy to wear at a nightclub yeah. uh, or just traveling. And then also it's, it has a, a wireless coil so you can charge it wirelessly. It looks really futuristic. Uh, and Reza itself means laser in Japanese. Okay. So it has that appeal of, of people from many different geographies. But I think the main thing that people really were attached to was light your own path. That's our philosophy. Yeah, I love that. And you have to apply to get access for the shoes. So you have to write an application and tell us what you do different, how you light your path. Wow. And we've today we've had over 80,000 people apply for the shoes. Just go through the application Whose process. idea was that? Where did you get that that concept to, to sort of, you know, make sure that in some way, not that you're gatekeeping, but that you're like making sure people really care about the shoe? How did that evolve? It really came just through trying to build something that is authentic. Like when you have a, a product that is relatively new, a new technology. I think people don't know how to position it exactly correct. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. So for, for us, asking people to share their like most personable experience with us allowed us to show them like, no, this is not a shoe. This is not what we're, we're trying to do. Yeah, it we're sets you to... apart right out the gate. Absolutely. And then for people who listen, or if you're listening, you probably can't see what's in front of us. If you're watching, you can see it. But you, how long did this thing take to create? And so you have a shoe, you need to charge it. There's probably 4,000 ways of achieving that. You know, what, how did you land here? Which is a pad, the shoes are on a pad right now, people listening. But how did you land on what we're seeing in front of us right now? It took two years from sketches to developing a product that's water resistant, the lights work, the lights are oh, that's uh, right, yeah. very comfortable, the shoe's comfortable, yeah. going through different molds, different testing. We went through over 25 iterations of the shoe yeah. for our first production run. Uh, so it took two years and it took a lot of much more effort than I thought to make a shoe. Most people don't know that most Nike or, or Jordans from sketch to storefront, they, they take about 36 months. So it's a, you mm. have to be very patient during that process. Yeah. A lot of different parties involved, a lot of testing. And so what made you guys want to land on this like uh, charging pad? Was it more of like you want people to have it in their house and it's sort of like on display, like a feature or, you know, what was the logic here? It looks beautiful. It looks really, it looks really cool. It too. does look cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just to have it really displayed as not even a shoe, but right. more of an experience. You I can think put anything on there. Yeah. You can, yeah. Put, you can, you can charge your iPhone on it and, uh, oh, you can, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. you, can charge, you can charge your iPhone, but a lot just, of features. Okay. That's yeah, cool. It, it's really just the first experimentation of what the brand is and what it represents, you know, for forward facing, we have concepts that we're even more excited about, but when people walk into your house and they see a charging pad, People are going to ask questions regardless. Like they're going to, they're going to be interested. Gets the conversation going. Absolutely. And so you, you, you place your first order. You guys are two and a half years in, you're ready to go. What is this time like for you? Are you like, do people care? 
Are we actually going to sell? And you go to market. How much is the shoe when you go to market? It's 360 bucks. Okay. Um, we, and where do you launch your own website? Yeah. So background on that, we, we my co-founder and I were in Taiwan for a year yeah. developing the product. Yeah. It took us, a, we spent all of our venture money just on R&D and just flushing out the best product we could. Yeah. Our factory ended up going bankrupt and we came back home to the U.S. Because of COVID? Or Partially, yeah. yeah. Wow. We, we came back home from, from COVID with about 12 pairs of shoes and I think three of them didn't work. So we had really nine pairs of shoes, no money left. My parents want me to go back to college and all of a sudden we get a, we get a message from Steve Aoki's team. And Steve Oki had heard about the product. Somehow he got interested. And I just, I wake up at 2 a.m. and he's wearing our shoes in Las Vegas at Omnia. I like a he's, show that he's doing. At his flagship show, yeah. Wow. He starts posting us on Instagram to 10, 20 million followers. Wow. Uh, everyone and my cousin is like, Steve Oki's wearing your shoes. Uh, and then from there, uh, you know, a couple other amazing artists, DJ Ski. And you had no idea how that happened. It, some of them were just through mutual connection. Some of them were just happening organically. But those those nine pairs that we had, we ended up seeding six of them and we had that's crazy. Yeah. And so we, you're down to your last nine. You go at twelve, three don't work, you're down to your last nine. Steve Aoki shows up and then you've sort of crushed it. It couldn't it couldn't have gone better from a marketing perspective. It could not have gone better. In two that's weeks amazing. we had twenty thousand people sign up for their shoes. And then what happened? And so then you gotta find a new supplier, start over or Yeah. Then we, <laughs> we did a drop, it was five hundred pairs. We were like, we can't okay. have liability of taking But you found a new supplier, a new right? Well, first we 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 did the drop. We took the money from the customers. We said it's gonna be a couple months. Yeah. And then we said, let's find the supplier. Okay. So we had the capital from our customers and we went back to Taiwan, this time more determined. Had a great supplier. Took us another couple months to make the shoes, but we shipped we shipped them out to twenty countries. And at some point, are is like Steve and some of these other DJs? Are they like, hey, look, this is what we want for iteration two. This is what we this is what we see in the next. Or are they kind of like they're good with it? They like what they see. Like, what are they? What what advice are they giving you, if any? Really, colors like people like 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 Steve and people like that. They love to express themselves through different colors, different iterations. But I think when you come out with a product that's a little bit new like people just latch onto it in in a really amazing way so yeah. we've sent steve a bunch of pairs custom pairs custom designs different colorways um a couple other great artists who've just gone behind behind the brand and uh that was really uh you know steve doesn't uh, have any kind of equity or any kind sure. of partnership with us it was yeah. just him he just showing, likes the product yeah just yeah. he likes the product and really when we just back channel with his team like he brought us out to to a show he just loves to support young founders who are doing cool shit. Yeah, no, I love it. Can you change the color of the shoe? The, you, the light, not so much the color, but the light? You can't, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> not this, This the first drop was founder's edition. It was 500 pairs, just blue. Yeah. Our second drop is 2,000 pairs we sold out. It's a white shoe with white light. Yeah. And our, our next drop is going to have uh, opportunity to change color. And how many people bug you being like, hey man, we, we go back, how do I get some shoes? <laughs> like how, you, I mean, people must bother you about getting shoes if they're all sold out. They do, they do. It's a problem. I, I, I tend to, I have a lot of samples at my house in, in Michigan, so yeah. I, you know, I'm always giving friends some shoes, but it, it means a lot to have your, your family and, and people around you support, supportive in that sense. My, my parents, they, they're from Pakistan. We have an immigrant story and they, yeah. they're doctors. They wanted me to be a doctor, but now they're really, they're proud of me that their son's making light-up shoes, so we, it means a lot. They're proud of you? Absolutely. That means a lot, yeah. yeah. Did you ever actually, so in, in, in real talk, when you had, nine pairs left. Did you actually consider going to school again? Like, were you like, okay, I'll go back in September. Yeah. I mean, I didn't have a choice. Like we, we, we came out, we went through tech stars. We had loud mouths. We said, we we're going to revolutionize footwear yeah. and we were down to our last nine shoes. So it was, it was a pretty difficult situation, but I think it happened with, <laughs> you know, it couldn't have gone out of that in a, in a better direction. And yeah. that I think as we grow the business and through, through any, experience in life you have to remember those those dark periods to, to push you forward and in, in the direction you want i think that's what it's all about it's like this book like burn the boats that we have here it's like there's a burn the boats moment in every startup where it's like you don't have another choice and somehow that simplifies everything and it also gives you an awareness of how close you are to achieving the thing that you set out to achieve and there's a beauty in that absolutely and then if you just keep chasing that i think that's when magic happens absolutely yeah so what's next for the company now what are you guys working on today do you have more investors? Are, are you thinking of making this like a lifestyle company? Will you stick with the shoes? What, what, what does today look like for the company? We've raised a couple million bucks from, from VCs. 
we're really focused on building an amazing footwear brand. So we're scaling, we're growing to probably 20 to 30,000 units over the next 12 months. So it's really exciting for us scaling the team. We brought in designers from Yeezy, uh, from Adidas to, to lead our growth in footwear. We're also excited about apparel. We made a light up track suit for, for night running. So a lot of our fan base, they, they run at nighttime. And in the US, that can be a real problem. 15 people die every day by being hit by cars. So any way that we can have that visibility, I think is really important. Yeah. But really it's what's, what's exciting about, about when I hear from our customers and what I see what we do, we've had people say, they've met their girlfriend or boyfriend through wearing the shoes. Or we've had, we have one of our customers is going through chemotherapy and when they go, when he goes, he, he wears a Reza hoodie and the shoes. So I think for me, that's what gets me up every morning. And I think that's what, that's what the direction we want to go to. We obviously don't know where that's going to land, but yeah. And let's say you bought the shoe, the original with the, with the pad, do you need to buy the pad again? Or is it, does it, do they all come with a pad? How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's universal. So the pad works with any, any set of shoes. And these originals, they, they, they retail for 360. They're now trading on StockX for like 7, 800 bucks. So yeah. that was really cool to see just the... The secondary market. Absolutely. Yeah. Have, have you gotten any companies that are coming in and trying to replicate what you're doing? Is that happening yet? Or trying to like, you know, take your, take your thunder? I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say that, but we've had great conversations with other footwear brands. I think IoT and technology and, and shoes has always been yeah. a really just exciting space. Nike had a self-lacing shoe, the Adapt BB. Yeah. That was a pretty cool proof of concept. So it's been pretty collaborative. Footwear production itself is pretty difficult. When you're forging that with hardware, it's not, it's not an easy plate, and it's something that you, you really have to be in a, in a really uh, particular setting like Taiwan, which they have you know, high-quality advanced chips and really detailed manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of directions that I think people want to figure out in footwear and, and apparel is how do we create the next generation and make, it, yeah. make sure the cost is effective and the, the end user wants to have the product as well. What kind of technology are you guys working on, if any? Uh, kinetic charging is something that we, we, we've spent a lot of time on. So right now the shoes charge on a charging pad, but we envision uh, when you walk, the shoes just regenerate the battery itself and you can track your calorie intake, your stride, your GPS, anything in an Apple watch, you can put that in shoes. I think for us, that's the holy grail and what we think is exciting. When you get a text, your shoes vibrate, different kind of features in, oh, that, wow. in that way with, would be really cool. Yeah, so they're super connected. What do people do with them? Do people run in them? Do they just wear them all the time? Or they, would you call it a running shoe? What do people mostly do in your shoes? Our first shoe is, is athleisure. So you can see there's no laces. The shoe itself is pretty, it's pretty light if you hold it. Yeah. It's something that we were really focused on that it doesn't have to feel like a light up shoe. It just feels like a really comfortable product to wear. And our designer who, who built the product, uh, he was at New Balance for many years. And we wanted to build something that looks kind of unique and kind of avant-garde. And we're just going to continue continue in that direction. But the most exciting thing for us is definitely just having a product that is just has kinetic charging because then you can just walk and regenerate the battery is really cool. And the lights that we use are ourselves, we have patents on and it's something that we've worked with a supplier to, to develop. So yeah. we think we have something special. And do you have like a dream collab? A dream collab. Whether it be with a brand or maybe with like, obviously so maybe someone like Steve or an athlete, is there something that you would just, you know, maybe you're working on already, I don't know. But yeah. is there something that really like you'd be super pumped about? Yeah, I think we're doing one of our dream collabs right now. It's with a car company. And we're doing an exclusive drop with them. Whoever buys a car, it's an electric car, is getting a free pair of residence. I was, I was literally about to say, I literally, before I asked this question, I was like, I bet you, and I'm not saying it's Tesla, but in my head, I was like, these should come with like a Cybertruck. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like, I was like, if I buy a Cybertruck, I, I should get a pair of these shoes. It, because it, it makes the moment so much better Absolutely. of like the acquisition of the vehicle. Absolutely. It's like, now I got this gift and it could be anything. It could be Rivian. But the point is like an electric vehicle, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. When is yeah. that? When does that drop? Can you announce it? Uh, that's dropping end of this year. Okay. Uh, I don't think an announced car company, but it's a, it's electric. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> and it's it's pretty it's pretty exciting. That's amazing. Um, Certain color? Uh, it's it's uh it's a red light. Red. So it's black shoe with red lights and black the car, shoes red lights. <laughs> the car is red as well, <laughs> uh, with a red interior. So it's it's gonna be pretty cool. That's amazing. People wear the shoe in in many different ways, like. You know, we want to just make something that's versatile, but a lot of our, our, our fan base is our athletes, they're skateboarders, they like to jog, but also you have people in healthcare who, who work in a pediatric ward who just want to put a smile on their patient's face. So it's really cool to see people express themselves differently. Yeah. How would you wear them? How would you wear some light-up shoes like this? That's what I was trying to think about. I don't really know. It's like probably if I go to events, you know, I go to a lot of events and stuff like that. And so at events I like, if we're opening up something new, like a ribbon cutting, I'd probably wear them there. 
Right. You know, something like that. I just like that they're one color. I don't know. I'm a simple guy. If when it comes like right now, I'm wearing a white shirt. I don't like logos. And so this is like a, it's interesting, but it still has the flair because you can add the light. Right. And so there's a component that's like stylish without sort of being in your face. Absolutely. Which I like about it. Do you think yeah. there's anything in, in, in fashion? Like how do you express yourselves in terms of, you don't have light up shoes, but what, is there something that you notice in people, whether it's a watch or whether it's a brand that kind of brings you together? Do you feel like you have that in some, in some capacity? It's interesting. When I think about fashion, I think about like the, the company market and we've, we've had Mike Sherman on the podcast. He's like a real creative genius from, from my perspective. And what I love about what he's doing is he'll take elements from culture that are relevant today. And he has a way of creating these like t-shirts that are like, I would say for the moment or streetwear that's for the moment. And that's a, it's a really interesting way to look at fashion, right? And I just love that he does that. And I love that he's built a community kind of exactly to what you're saying. Actually, his whole thing is about community. His whole thing is about, you know, his story. He was bullied as a kid. And so he found out that through fashion, he could become like the cool kid or he could sort of come like come into the community. He could be embraced by nothing other than fashion. Interesting. And so he made his whole company about that. And so when he's being part of the culture, it's like he's solving that problem that he has as a little kid. And that's the culture he's created. And he's found a, a massive amount of people, celebrities, LeBron, that wear his stuff all the time. Right. And so that's really interesting. When I think about me personally, I think about it like I just want it to be timeless. Like I want to look at a photo when I'm, let's say, 20 years old or 60 years old. And it's not the fashion is not of the moment, actually. Yeah. It's just like this like timeless piece. You know, and so what that means literally is it could be an old watch, right. but it could be an old watch that I'm wearing in an old photo or wearing today. You don't know, but it's like, it's a, it's a piece. Absolutely. And so everything for me in fashion is more of like pieces, which is why like right now, just a waffle shirt, white, no logos. And so, you know, the only thing that I could tell you, maybe the air is like the haircut, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, that's how I think about fashion for me personally. That's what I like about it. Timelessness. Right. Yeah. It's not trying to do too much. Absolutely. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, which I think is rare. I'm not also, I'm not like a fashionista, I don't think, but maybe. I just like to keep it simple. Yeah. So what's next? What can you tell us? What's on the horizon besides the, uh, I love the electric vehicle drop. That's pretty epic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really just like sharing our philosophy, like about Lightroom Path. I think it's, I think it's really cool concept that we're trying out. What I, what I think is really exciting for me is just like in-person events, like a, a lot of the stuff that like you do I, is, is just meeting people in person and that connection is so strong. So in our discord channel, we have all of our, all of our users and, and, and thousands of people, it, people are arranging meetups in Miami and Dubai and in, in Texas. So it's about, you know, bringing people together. And I think it's, that's, that's for me is puts a smile on my face when you can say, Hey, people, people met, they shared, they connected yeah. through a product that you've done. Yeah. That's, that's really what we're after and, and what we're going to continue to do. I want to dive into this because I think like, so almost give yourself advice from a sense of, you're a young person. You had an idea to start a company. In doing that, you have a product. There's there's a couple different ways of launching a product. You decided to do a drop. In that, you're trusting to some extent that everything you've done is going to work, right? Because right? it could it could also flop. Nobody could buy. Yeah. And so, give people a window into into things you did that made you successful during the drop, and maybe what that was like for you in a real way of like, fuck, like I'm going to go out and hope the world sort of votes with dollars you know give people a window into the strategy of doing it and then what you were going through personally and then you know obviously it worked out but yeah are you asking more of of the like how we knew that customers were going to embrace the product or more just or what did you do to ensure it i guess it was like once you once you decided to have a drop yeah then you have to make sure it's going to execute of course so like what was that like nerve-wracking nerve-wracking for sure uh after we did the drop we had to go to taiwan Taiwan was closed during COVID, so we had to get a letter from the CDC to allow us to go there. We had to do two weeks in hotel quarantine. So I'd say just determination. Like when once you've put your cards down, like you can't fail. You have to make it work. Yeah, go. And I'd say some some sense of practicality as well. Like we you can't just jump into something having no idea, no context. You have to really feel something, and you have to be communicative too. Like we when people purchased our shoes, there was nine month wait until we shipped. We didn't have one, maybe one, but we didn't have many customers that were upset. They were excited about it. And when they finally got the product, they said, hey, the wait was worth it. This made it better. Cause it was right. It was like you spent your time getting it right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah getting it right. 
and just being pragmatic and, and persistent, I think, is really important, They're, especially in fashion and, and creating products. It's, it's, it seems easy, but once you get into the, the smallest chip or the smallest oh, totally. unit, it yeah. can take you way longer than you expected. Yeah, especially when you're buying that quantity also. It's like anything can go wrong with a percent of them, and that's, that's real money. Yeah, and you also have to sell, sell stories with suppliers as well. Mm -hmm. Like in, in, in footwear, most factories won't take you in unless you're doing a 30,000 unit MOQ. And we had 500 pairs. So you have to sell that story in when people believe that in, on the other side of the world. It's, it's equally as important. Yeah, I love that. When's the next drop? Next drop is going to be around September. So it's going to be a, a new colorway, color changing lights. Uh, our largest drop today, probably about 5,000 pairs. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really cool. And then, and then the car thing is this fall? It'll be this around fall. Around the same time? It'll be this fall, yeah. We're, we're shooting a pretty cool commercial for that, so it'll be... I believe it. Yeah. So well, tell it. people where they can find you and, and sort of, well, obviously buy StockX right now, yes. but where can they find you? Where can they buy? Where can they support on Instagram? Yeah, uh, they can find uh, Reza, Footwear, and uh, they can find me just most of a dot say it. And uh, yeah, we're always posting about our drops and we're always kind of sharing cool, cool posts from our community. I love it, brother. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Of course. Can't wait for you to, to try the shoes and, <laughs> I'm going and, to. To, and to get some pictures of it. <laughs> thanks, brother. Thank you so much for the support and making it to the end of the episode. If you haven't already, please do a review and share the episode with your friends. If you never want to miss a beat on all things entrepreneurship, make sure to follow us on socials for daily content. See you next Tuesday for another great episode.